Пані-то панове, мене... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrei Shevchenko, and on behalf of the Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum, I want to thank all the journalists who tell the world the truth about our fight for freedom. This time we're having a special event. We have an impressive panel of guests, and we will be talking about the establishment of the inclusive society in Ukraine. Our guests, they have projects that they may boast and they can present. They have plans and they have goals. And I will proceed to our guests. I will ask Ms. Svetlana Boyka, the representative of Yermis, to start. Good afternoon. I want to thank all the guests and experts who are visiting us today. I want to thank our defenders for uh, opportunity to live and to keep working. We pondered over the establishment of the in inclusive culture in Ukraine for a long time ago, and now we are facing new challenges, and there are a lot of uh, difficult injuries and uh, wounds and we started creating the guides for practical recommendations we got engaged the specialists who went that difficult way and we appreciate that they shared their knowledge with us can we present can we introduce our guests i will Pass the microphone to Olga Kwashuk, who represents the International Fund Vidrogenia or Renaissance. Can you please tell us in detail about the projects that you support? Well, yes, this project is one of the, of the 30 initiatives that are foundation supports together with the European Union. European Union is actually our long-term strategic partner and uh, it's been three years that we're having uh, this project you for you you for you society european union for european uh, for ukrainian society which was aimed at supporting the civil participation in different reforms in national level and local level and after after the beginning of the full-scale invasion, after the 24th of uh, February, we got reoriented many initiatives. We had digitalization, for example, we had some important things. <coughs> they were, uh, m there were more important things, strategic goals we had to survive and to save the country, and we redirected our main activity, we re-aimed it at the uh, volunteer initiatives, we uh, established the project Hold the Line, and Yermis is one of the winners of the contest. And it's important because those are the money of the taxpayers of the European Union, and it shows the solidarity with Ukraine that we have to say uh, to help our defenders. We have to help internally displaced internally displaced people. Are, the project includes psychological support, legal support uh, for both our defenders and for people who had to leave their homes. And we also have work of the volunteers who work with the help of to the defenders to, to, to have them uh, protected and to, to, for them to provide clothing, to help paramedics. It's a very complex set of activities, and, but everybody in their level, we hold the line in this civil front. And your miss, we talked it over with them. It's very important that the communities where our defenders are coming back to, unfortunately, not all of them come back uh, without injuries. This trend is still ongoing, so we all have to be ready, both families and the people themselves, because uh, many people feel lost. We need to know how to communicate with them, how to, how to build these cultures so that we grow as the civil society so that we help each other, that we support each other. And I think the experts today will tell about their recommendations. 
and that uh, those recommendations will be spread all around and heard in every community in Ukraine. Yes, this war made us look at all the issues related to inclusivity in a new way. I'm talking about the heavy injuries among the both military and civil population. And in our on our panel, we're having the representatives of civil organizations that know profoundly this subject and we will ask them to tell about their activity and what we should be what Ukraine should be ready to ready for. I would ask Olena Chinka, merited master of sports of Ukraine, head of all Ukrainian NGO United Country. Good afternoon everybody. I am happy I was invited to take part in this project and you know I uh, I would like to say about the people making difference because the absence of indifference is the principal thing about this project it gathered a number of people who are uh, who care about the subject of injury and about the people who end up in this situation i live with injury more than 30 years and is the first time that uh, we're issuing this kind of guide and we were helping each other all the time we were getting together the mothers of the children born with disabilities and we were helping each other by just getting united and this is uh, how we are now our team we're having our experience we have professional knowledge that we can share we can support people we can help them su survive after the situation of injury to see the light in they can walk towards they can and that they can understand that they can live with that and i want to thank all the specialists and i hope that our experience will be of help it will help to live, to keep working and to get new strength to live on with the God's help, to help with their experience, to help others. In, in, in a minute we will try to get uh, one of the other guests connected and I will ask Olesa Perepechenko who represents the NGO modern beauty to have a word good afternoon i'm happy to thank everybody for invitation to this studio i live with a impaired view or i would say even without a view more than 40 years but it became something that i achieved in my life because it seems to me that the loss of vision made me stronger I had 10 years of my life when I was uh, after after school I was enclosed in myself I was sitting at home and I was taken care of and in this guide all the experts they input so much their special knowledge so much of their soul so much of their advice that they about something they were fighting with and what they achieved by that fight and I want that during this time when many when many guys would be coming back from the front lines with heavy injuries and there will be many civilians heavily injured I don't want people to lose time because I understand that those 10 years of my life there was a colossal abyss between one word and the other and I want this guide really to help people because it, it would be of, of use to people it, it's uh, interesting to read and it's easy to read with it doesn't contain any heavy scientific terms because it's made by those who have experience and who live the injuries and with different kinds of disabilities and it, I hope it will help people who require this information 
who need this support and I want those guides to become available to all of those th that really need them even now that you take it and e even if a person doesn't read it they will one way or another get back to it and get interested about it so we have to deliver this information to the hospitals to the uh, different agencies to institutions but this information should become useful not only that it, so it doesn't remain on paper but it it is spread in the society and form the society in its inclusive direction in information space in space of availability in creation of uh, conditions for proper conditions for communication architecture in all directions uh, I want to thank everybody a lot and I'm sure that we did a great job and it will be a very useful result for those who need it. Thank you very much. Uh, joining us in this studio is Maria Zvyakintseva who represents the NGO Legal 100. Maria, can you show yourself please so that we know where you are? Well, we, we, we know that you're here. If we have questions, we will ask you and we will try to have our participants joining us online. Are we having Jana Kapitina, who represents the Modern View organization? Oh, good afternoon, Jana. What do you have to say? Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear audience. I want to say that I'm uh, concerned with the issue of ergotherapy and physiotherapy for servicemen. Today we have a lot of cases when after the injuries, after the treatment, after the <clears throat> medicines, treatment and surgeries, the patients end up in the crossroads. They don't know where to go next. They don't know how to uh, renew themselves with the help of the specialists or by themselves. They don't know whom to ask. I want to emphasize that the physical therapy and ergotherapy are necessary components of renewal and, uh, and treatment of the person in a post-war time. We have to teach people how to survive after, for example, amputation of a limb or a loss of sight or, or a loss of hearing because people end up in new circumstances, in new conditions that they never lived before and they don't know how to get accommodated to those new conditions and with the help of this guide we're trying to work not only with the injured but with the members of their families as well because we think that we have to teach them to help properly this help doesn't have to grow into hyper care on the side of the member of the family about the family member who was injured we have to provide the ways for the person to become self-sufficient and independent even after the injury. Unfortunately, this guide will be useful not only for the servicemen, but uh, now that statistic is such that there is a large number of uh, civil population with injuries, including children, but we input our soul, we input all our effort, even with the power shutdowns, we try to work over it uh, in the best manner possible. And I hope that application of this guide will ease the processes of renewal, rehabilitation for our warriors, of our heroes. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to work with such a great team. Thank you. I want to invite Natalia Adamyuk, all Ukrainian NGO, Ukrainian Society of the Deaf. Good afternoon, everybody. Everybody understands who I am because I use the language of gestures. I would like to emphasize three things today. First is the fact that the project is very, very actual. It's now that the war is going no, non, when we really, uh, when our warriors do come back with injuries, 
I'm talking not about those only those in the front lines, but those who are by their side who also get injuries. I want to emphasize that we don't have to lose time that can go work against us now during the war. This guide is very valuable. Secondly, the project is very, very unique. What's its uniqueness? The uniqueness is that really we we uh, forecasted or like we contemplated different problems, different disabilities for the people who require help uh, based on our experience. We share our experience, we extend our helping hand and we extend support so that people have quality life. And third, I would like to say that the principle of equality whoever had some disabilities, some chronic diseases, they kind of lose their status, their former status of equality. They feel in enclosed space, they feel uncomfortable, they have the, the feeling of being different. Don't we there is no way we can let those feelings develop in no case. So this guide, it helps everybody to become equal. And those who don't have limbs and those who lose sight uh, or who lose hearing, we all have to be equal with the others, with the physically healthy people. First of all, it should be about equality. Thank you. Thank you. Nat Natalia Kalmykova, Ukrainian Veteran Foundation. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear good afternoon, dear friends and the audience who joins us online. I want to first of all thank for invitation for this event. It's very timely because talking about injury, talking about inclusiveness, uh, we, we have to start talking about it now, and uh, not when the w war is over. Even before the b beginning of the full-scale aggression, the inclusivity uh, is a difficult process. Our society was ready to, to treat people inclusively, and we can see how people treated uh, b b before formulating, where when previously during Soviet times they were saying disabled, now the people stop and they d don't know how to articulate it properly or they think about how to articulate it properly. And now that there is a full-scale war going on, is the artillery war, is the, the war where shellings are going on around the cities, we have to develop the new notion of norm of standard, who is healthy, who is uh, normal, and really nobody. So this is why this conversation in the broad circle with engagement of the largest number of people possible to have this fabric of the society soon together, the people with different injuries who experience, who had different experience, to have them united so that they feel like full-fledged members of the society. I'm enticed by the work that we did, the job that we did. I hope that there will be more such events, that we will see more cool stories on TV. The stories where the injury or disease or wound becomes an experience of an advantage, of an advantage over those who did not have an uh, such challenges, who did not experience such challenges, and it becomes standard, it becomes normal that we that we don't end up in a situation when we don't uh, know how to talk to a person with injury, how to look at a person with injury, so that our children perceive the people in the wheelchairs, that they perceive them normally and not getting wandered, and, and the parents wouldn't know what to tell them. I want this to become a standard and thanks to such events, thanks to the guides like this, they have to expand. Svetlana is asking me 
to tell about the capabilities of the foundation that we established before the war, Ukrainian Veteran Foundation. We started to implement the programs of financing of different initiatives for initiatives for, and the members of the veteran families and civil organizations who support those categories of population. We support entrepreneurship, we support businesses. For the next year, we plan to finance, including POHIN, the, uh, the organizations of disabled people with disabilities, and we call civil organizations who provide the uh, support to the veterans who help them to undergo rehabilitation, to receive some services. So we provide financing to implement these programs. We didn't put some uh, advantages for any categories because the majority of the veterans, they got back to war. So we understand that the majority of the organizations who will submit to the contest, to the bids, it would be less than they would than it would be if it's not for the full scale invasion. But we re but we know that the people are coming back already. They undergo rehabilitation, they undergo treatment, and they try to reintegrate in the civil life. I like. I don't really like the word word rehabilitation. So w when we talk about rehabilitation. Do we mean that th something is wrong about that person? Well, that, that that word, I don't really like it a lot. I like it more the word habilitation, the, uh, the opportunity to, to fulfill the, uh, the people's capabilities, to, to implement the people's capabilities, and any pro project that we support, we help to report, we look for mentors if it's necessary for implementation of the project, uh, but we need to achieve the result. And we are interested that the most organizations that work on the ground with the people, they, they, they submit and they get this opportunity. Thank you. I want to show the guide we're actually talking about. It consists of two books, very concisely, contains the practical recommendations for people who undergo rehabilitation or habilitation or adaptation. There, there is advice of, of a psychologist, of a lawyer, which may be useful for those people and for the members of their families. And we're communicating with the people who the, these books are written on who's based on who's telling these books are written. If there are questions in the studio, please go ahead. Uh, if not, in the pre worded to the book, Yarmis reminds that the war is going on starting from 2014, but the year 2022 set another standard of challenges. Uh, both in terms of their nature and whoever is ready to answer what did 2022 change in the sphere that we're talking about now, the scale, the specificity, maybe any new challenges, if anybody is ready to start and if we're having anybody who is ready to join us on Zoom, please let us know. Tatiana Kruka, the uh, Ukrainian Society of the Deaf. I, I, have a I have a hearing impairment. I use the hearing aid device. Uh, you were asking about the year 2022, what, what has changed, in my opinion. Uh, what changed is that the war became closer to all of us. It's like it, it entered every house, every home, and it became the threat that can cause some irreparable conditions for everybody. The hearing impairment is the next sensory impairment after the loss of sight, which 
cardinally changes the uh, way people live. We are talking today that the society should be inclusive. That's true. Inclusivity and the readiness of the society to accept and to, to be open to the people who have any type of disability is the factor that that will save our society and that will help it to stand in this difficult fight. Our society is really very classy. We did a lot during this period until this very day, until today, and we will do even more. But at the same time, for a person who lost hearing during the war, who who lost the hearing, they, uh, their life changes cardinally because they lose a part of information flow. The absence of information is something horrible. You don't know where to go, you don't know what to do. Even during the war, you don't know when the missile is flying, the rocket is flying at you, when the air raid alert is on. It's horrible. And at the same time, this guide, which is written and published and which I hope will be read by everybody who one way or another faces the problem, they will find some basic solutions, basic answers on what, about what to do and how to do it. It's very important also for the members of the fam families who, who, in the families who have relatives with disabilities it teaches how to live with that how to live on and this is why i want that this guide reaches every single person in these con conditions every every child every parent so that every parent can explain confidently to their children why uh, those persons are special. I hope we will not have something that uh, was happening after World War II when the society was hiding people with disabilities as if they did not exist. I hope that our society will be equal for everybody, no matter what were the consequences of war for them. Maybe somebody has information about the numbers, about the figures. How did the number of Ukrainians increase? I mean, those Ukrainians who require special attention. What figures are we talking about? How are we ready to cover those needs? The Veteran Foundation. As of today, the information about the number of injured and the specificity of the, the nature of the injuries is sensitive to a number of reasons. The Ministry of Defense does not disclose the, those figures, but we know that those figures are growing. Maybe there are some specialist evaluation. Well, none of the experts can give you an evaluation, but it's thousand, thousands, and it's way more than they were in 2014 or starting from 2014 well it's and it's not only about the military but also about the civilians all across the country and uh, the nature the nature of uh, disabilities the nature of in injuries it's it, it's not small arms the fact that it's artillery fights high intensity combats during which it's difficult to do medical evacuation and if there are delays in evacuation, it's difficult to re rehabilitate the limbs and other organs. The challenges are huge and the task is on the government level, on the state level, to provide the treatment and further rehabilitation and the infrastructural changes that will allow people to feel comfortable and not to have restrictions and another part is uh, is the society's personal responsibility. How do I treat a person with, when, when I see a person with uh, special needs? Can you explain for a non-military person well, what does it mean, the artillery the, the, that you mean, the new nature of injuries? Well, well, if, if a person is wounded by a bullet, it has a special mechanics 
of uh, action on the body. There is the en entrance orifice and the exit orifice. It may damage the life if it may damage some important organs, but if, if it's uh, shelling by a powerful ammunition, the damage is uh, way more complex. It, it may damage a large part of the body, plus it may be a non-explosive injury, and it may be a damage of... Uh, it, it may be an explosive damage and something that we call concussion that that accompanies the uh, explosions of any intensity its influence on, on the sensory organs and on the brain and the influence of on the sight on the hearing and all those the, uh, the balance organs so all these types of injuries they multiplied sufficiently now do we have any questions in the studio if so let us know and our expertise is growing in the studio i want to introduce marina sernica <laughs> from yarmis good afternoon i'm here and joining us in this studio is alexander Vesnuk, the head of The, the head of a legal group and I want to call everybody who has anything to say please take the microphone we earlier introduced Marina Zvakintseva do we have any questions in the studio if not I will have a question maybe to wrap up our discussion oh there is a question in the studio just a small second I was listening very attentively. I like the questions that were asked. Do we have any statistics about the number of the people who require such type of support? I support this question because uh, in our Ukrainian society of the deaf, we don't have such figures. I was saying about the actuality of this project and of the guide that time works against us. I was saying this so I want these people to be saved. This information shouldn't be closed. Provide this information to the people. Give it to the Ukrainian Society of the Deaf and we're ready to help them. We're ready to work with them so that they have hope for better, at least hope for better life. Your questions, please. Thank you very much for this event, for this meeting. I see people who gathered here, they know how to do the rehabilitation for the amputees, for the people who lost their sight, their hearing. This guide is incredibly useful, but for what I know, practice is important too. It's important to have a, a mentor, an instructor nearby. Is it going to be another step in this project? First of all, this guide contains QR codes which uh, redirect to the to a number of uh, videos with practical advice, with practical trainings, uh, how to get accommodated, and further on, we would like to uh, join our efforts of the of our organizations and uh, of the society and government and to establish the training center which we would call a uh, way to the self-sufficient life so our our specialists and instructors work and they help the people they help those people who get disability to get them adapted to to find motivation to renew and live full life. This is how we want to establish our centers so it's convenient and comfortable. And with the veteran spaces, if we're talking about the combatants and their uh, family members, 
it's a very important question the our establishment of our veteran spaces and we are part of a coalition of the veteran spaces and we discussed that issue and the people who were taking part in the combats in the war operations we want already to start doing it and we hope that we will get united and we will make it miss tatiana and then miss olga and w if we put it concisely we, we will be able to ask another question i would like to emphasize that to concerning the people who lose their hearing our organization is ready to to, to promote already now, no matter if there is a project or not, almost in every regional center we have uh, employees and we have centers who are ready to react to the requests. Olga Kvashuk, yeah, we were talking about the challenges that 2022 made us face and really for the healthcare system, we need to learn a lot new things and psychologists and social workers who provide advice this type of patients it's not everybody who's ready to work with them we have a project that we for example develop with kiev mohila academy we prepare a training course for psychologists and social workers how to work with the people who have war injuries our defenders and the people who who had to experience all those horrors. And uh, we, we work with the uh, TAPS Foundation. Uh, we should, we're about to issue the sorrow guide, is the guide for those who, who are waiting for their closed ones to come back from war, for whose uh, closed ones, whose family members are missing in action. It's very important and the advice for the draft offices how they communicate there should be some stand culture standard implemented that some may not even be aware of so that this is a complex of works and we support the work of psychologists in different uh, regions we work with the veteran spaces network and we hope that we will continue Continue to provide this support, this initiate to su support of this initiative, Olena Ovchinka. I would like to return to the civilians. I am a person who lives without two legs for more than twenty years. Uh, something changed there, but in terms of prosthesis that we have it on the level that it, it should be existing on a good level the specialist we have to establish the the school of walking we don't have it today Konstantin Riflevsky my prosthesis doctor he's present here and we uh, talk about this project for a long time we want to make the prosthesis center in Ukraine which is still non-existent at all and it's my personal sorrow that uh, un uh, until now we're in this square one uh, the doctors don't cooperate with the prosthesis specialists they make amputations in a in such a way that the person cannot get back on their stand on their feet and live an active life and is the problem that has to be solved because even before the war this problem existed and it's even bigger now but it's not being solved it has to be done it has to be done together with the state but for the time being it's been mostly taken care of by the people who are not indifferent about this who care about this and I have a hope I, we were talking with Yermis that based on this wonderful on the basis of this wonderful uh, rehabilitation center we will make a we will establish a walking school and I'm uh, fond of art therapy that inspires people it gets gets them back to, to real life I'm practicing the wheelchair dance 
and let's work all together let's just act and the people who gathered here they are people of action so let's not wait for anything or anybody let's just go ahead because if not us then who who can make it and only those who walk will walk their way Marina Serica, your miss J -j just 20 seconds of your time I appreciate Miss Natalia's and Miss Olga's words because really uh, we have to walk on our uh, modern view NGO together with the National Assembly of the People with Disabilities we established the information consultancy hubs for the people with the impairment of sight and amputations and the injuries back, back injuries this information is available there are post uh, postings in the hospitals and we started working with the people who got injuries and with their family members we disseminated the information and they started calling us themselves and when we just established this initiative the consultants the people with sight impairment they provide information either to the family members or to the people who lose their sight that's the equal information eye to eye they they call us they text us in the messengers and they ask us any kind of information something very elementary like is there life for the blind ones yes there is life and there is happy life for those who lost their sight so you understand those steps that we take we can offer a lot of things we can do a lot of things but and it's pleasant that many foundations they train the specialists but the first step is anyway made by the person who got an injury uh, and the family member uh, very frequently the mothers call uh, I appreciate your words but we're having our next event in five minutes so please uh, I ask everybody please call us please text us please appeal to us even with the questions that seem weird maybe call to any organizations and ask them the, the, the development exists and it should exist Marina Sirica Marina can you please tell us are we becoming better as the society uh, I appreciate your words as a society we have to remember that nothing heals better than the relations and as the society we have to be ready for such relations that may be uh, new to us but the understanding of the inclusivity is the engagement its involvement and the understanding of the fact that each of us are ready to get involved in the relations when we are understood when we are here and we feel safe and uh, I offer, I propose everybody to realize that the understanding of the people with the problems that they got that they can experience in different emotional states us as the society the, the guys that help to that inform that teach us how to understand they have to create this atmosphere of safety at the level like I am hearing you I feel you I understand you in all the ways that I can understand you I'm by your side and I'm here for you and I think this is how our society will win any war and will overcome any obstacles any challenges we're facing now thank you and glory to Ukraine glory to the heroes thanks I want to thank all the participants I want to draw at the attention to this book once again that our guests brought here Thank you for what you're doing. We're having quite a unique set of uh, activists and professionals. And I want to invite everybody to follow our announcements. Our next event is in three minutes. Thank you. Stand with Ukraine.